Hello, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to another interview as part of our Fall 2015 Candidates for City Council coverage. In the studio with me is Patrick Weaselhead. He's a candidate for Ward 4. Thank you for joining me, Patrick. You're welcome. It's good um, to be here. I've made up these questions. They're the same questions for all the candidates to give you an opportunity to talk about your campaign. Sure. And I thought it would be nice to do it in this setting because our public forum, MCAT, is covering it, but sometimes it's louder or the, the microphone doesn't work as well and, and so on. So here's your first question. What motivates you to run for office? That is one of the intriguing questions why I'm here. In my past, I've always seen organizations, businesses, um, groupies, a number of folks, and I always ask the question, where's your diversity? And part of that is there's very little diversity in those organization structures. So uh, when that happens, and I keep thinking, if something comes up where I can be a part of that option to be the diversity, I had better apply. Right. So when Caitlin Koppel um, resigned her position with Ward 4, I realized I was in Ward 4, and that concept reverberated in my head, and I thought, well, I had better submit my name because when I asked that question of city council, they'll say, well, we don't get anybody to apply. Yeah. So this time they would have somebody applying for that position. And so thus I submitted my name thinking that I can do as well as anybody else yeah. um, in a city council, and I'm qualified to do that, so why not submit my name? And I did. And the voting process with uh, your previous in, uh, interviewee uh, decided that um, we would run against each other for that position, one of six. And so when they finally voted, I kept thinking, well, he's going to get it. But it oh. turns out that I got it, and I was shocked and surprised. Yeah. and bewildered and then I thought well I better roll up my sleeves because this is the beginning so that's why I got involved in that right and and I'm going to just paraphrase what you said just in case people uh, in the viewing audience didn't know Caitlin Coppola was representing Ward 4 yes and then her work took her out of town so much right yes she said oh I'm not doing this justice I think even though it's not part of the election cycle I will resign my position in that case the City Council appoint someone yes. to fill out the term until an election occurs, and that person was you. Exactly, and, and part of that, it has to take a majority of the 12 people to seat the next person coming in. Right. And so we set through that process, and that's why I'm here now. You, are, you already went through a trial yes. by fire. Yes, but and, not an election, right. and that's what I'm running for this fall. Yeah, and you are not the first candidate that has come to um, MCAT this morning and said, to the qualifying uh, question, that they felt an ordinary citizen, however ordinary they may be, that that everyone should be qualified to run for council. That's oh, yes. the nature of democracy. Exactly. Like you don't need a degree in this or that, or mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to say, well, I'm qualified because I went to a school of government or something. Um, is that question two already? Why do you think you are qualified? Well, as we talk about too. that, <laughs> well, there's a number of reasons, and I'm going to tell you specifically my understanding of Missoula. I came here in 1963 as a freshman at the University of Montana. Whoa. And part of that, um, going over a valley hill and coming in and to a valley that had a little bit of stench to it because of the Lumber, uh, yes, being the TP burners. As yes, they exactly. Were and I remember coming into thinking this is totally unusual for me. I'm first generation high school graduate, uh, out of nine, and the second the youngest. So my siblings before me never finished high school. I was the first to do that. Uh, when I got here, I was astonished and amazed about the environment. Here I am, a brown-skinned Indian boy from Browning, Montana, coming into an, a community. I didn't know anything about, I didn't know anybody at the university, I had no contact, but I made application. And part of that application was the Bureau of Indian Affairs had a scholarship program that paid for tuition and fees. And so I got a hold of that and came over here and my first class was, wow, what a 
big difference from high school. Uh -huh. So when I understood Missoula at that time was a unique proposition for me. Yeah. But as I go on, I finished my bachelor's degree in accounting, finished my master's degree in guidance and counseling from here, I felt a compassion for Missoula because on, I think it was 730 Eddy Street was with Native American Studies Building. And that was sort of a composite for Native Americans to feel welcome to Missoula. And that was sort of like home to all of us. So with that, I, I expanded out in Missoula. I'm an um, ex-marathon runner. I've done three marathons. Wow. So I ran almost every street in Missoula. I used to do the, end, uh, the run up to the rattlesnake with my colleagues at the university. I did several of the bank runs, and I had multiple t-shirts from that. So part of that was to learning about Missoula and its connectivity. So when I got to the point where I was resigning from the university, or retiring from the university, I spent a year and a half not doing anything but working in my house. Yeah. But then I had energy to commit. And so my understanding is that you need to give back to a community. You know, I grew up in poverty. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, we were from a very rural community. And so, and we understood that we were treated like second class citizens a long time ago. And maybe to some extent now. So I wanted to volunteer and give back. So the first thing I did is um, went to the um, food bank. And I volunteered there. And I saw a lot of my fellow people, a lot of Indians there. But I also saw a lot of economically disadvantaged non-natives. Yeah. And I thought I wanted to make systemic change by helping them to do something to get out of this. And so I wrestled with it as a um, retiree from the university and a critical thinker with thinking about how to make change. I became uh, to a point of not understanding truly why people are in that position other than someplace along the line they lost track of an educational goal. And so I had more time and I did because I'm a veteran, a uh, Vietnam veteran as a matter of fact, uh, I decided I wanted to work with a DAV driver, which is a volunteer driver for disabled vets to and from their health clinic. Wow, was that an eye-opener. Uh. Uh, mental health issues, um, low um, services, just a number of things. And so I thought the same thing. How do you make change? And that's when the government was talking about delayed um, access for veterans to get into the health care service. Oh, yeah. And so I'm thinking, what can we do to expedite that? I met several good physicians over in the clinic who worked wonderful job for um, veterans, and I really appreciated that. So that's one of the things I did. And then the third thing, I thought, well, I still have time. I'm going to do Meals on Wheels for Missoula. Scott was saying. And I knew that this would be a way to get to every part of the community in Missoula, which I have, delivering meals to those who are economically disadvantaged, but also those who cannot cook for themselves. And I talked to individuals. I got a feeling for Missoula in that area. Although a lot of them didn't know me by name, they would know me by sight. Yeah. And so I didn't push my name because I didn't know if I needed to do that down the road. So I didn't think of political enhancement. Right, you just delivering uh, the meals. You're exactly. Like someday. So that's how I got to know Missoula. And I got to know it really well in a, um, when they were smaller than it is today and the sophistication it is now because I've been on city council since February yeah. on every city committee and I've learned a lot about Missoula both not only the issues that are unfolding but the undertow what needs to take place to get things done and collaboration and cooperation is one of those things that I really push and I, before I, I go on I want to mention there's one value that I have that pushes me and that's respect I respect you I expect it back to be respected me as an individual. So that's what I stand for, is that individual's respect. So I know Missoula. Yeah, and Missoula is fun. full of respectful people and kind people. And I've met many of them in my long term here. Um, this question is a little different because I think you're among the few that have the benefit of being the incumbent. This question says, what will your priorities be if you are elected? It's sort of strange being an incumbent because you were um, selected for that position and not elected for that position. I know that very clearly. But being an incumbent, I'm on every city committee and I'm learning about issues that come forward from the streets, 
from the police, from the fire department, from the sewage, from the water, um, parks and recs, and all those sort of things. So as I mentioned at a forum the other day that I'd like to stay on all those committees because it helps me grow as an individual and to learn what's happening. But if I really wanted to focus on one, I can stay on, or two, I can stay on the majority of the committees, but I can pull out where my interests lie in those areas. And so I'm still wrestling with that. What do I want to, where's my talents to get involved in this? And so that's what I'm looking at now, is figuring out what can I contribute to that committee? And as the new election, and if elected, I'll probably chair some of those committees. And yeah. so I'm looking forward to what I can do to contribute. Okay. Now this one asks you to put on a crystal ball, I guess. What does the future of Missoula look like to you? You know, I've been to many locations across the country, and um, I understand that there's importance about vibrancy. I like the well and alive city of Missoula. I like the fact that two rivers flow through it, and a third coming in from the Rattlesnake and the Blackfoot. So we have the water, which is sustainability for life. Yeah. And if you don't have that, what is a community? So we build things around those rivers that's really important to us. And so when I think about it, I see a vibrant city that has a focus on growth development, does not forget about the disenfranchised, the poor, the elderly, uh, those people who are left out of the circle a lot of times. So we are pulling those in to make sure that we have a livable community. And I want to be a part of that, be part of a livable community and a, a vibrant community. Missoula is great. Traffic problems as usual coming down here, I mean, on Higgins and uh, Broadway, and you have to wait for pedestrians to cross, and cars are turning left and right, and you're stuck the back there about a block and a half thinking, hmm, what can we do to fix this? And the, so there's an issue there that about making sure traffic is on. But then again, we have free bus service. We have bike lanes. It's very walkable. Um, just, um, you know, the city of Missoula with its... Uh, outdoor activities, its love of dogs, and not forgetting the cat owners because uh, you don't but see, you them, don't see them on leashes in them. And more people are conscientious about dogs and picking up after them and putting them on leashes. Uh, I volunteered for the RSVP program to help with the latest run that's up by the bank and um, seeing people walk through with their dogs and talking to them and all of them appreciate being on the leash because they understand what's happening and each one of them is carrying a plastic container for the dog droppings. Right. So that becomes vibrancy to being alive and I think we're going to do that 2020. Uh, we're going to be still the bank, but we're going to have small issues and one is taxes. How, I mean, how can we tax people to the point of what they want or what they need? And so those issues have to come forward in that. Okay. Now you get your freestyle. Um, Scott, how much time? He says you have seven minutes if you need it okay. to talk about what we haven't touched on in these first four questions. You know, I've been on several boards in the city and... Um, the first one was Youth Board, and I see where there are a lot of children who need homes. And I think there, and we in Missoula, the Missoulians, take heart to all of this issue. You know, there's a dog that needs to be adopted, we're right there. Right. Um, if there's a, a person who has a fire, we're right there donating things to help them get back on their feet. So when I think about all these things that need to be done, I keep thinking, what can I do with 11 other councilmen to push the agenda? And it comes to me to the point of saying collaboration and cooperation. If I don't build on those two, I'm going to be um, a sidebar to the effort of the city council. So rather than being a sidebar, I want to be a main part of the process. And so I have to focus on collaboration and cooperation. But more than that, I have to understand the issues. I, I just can't make a decision on issues I don't understand. I have to go back and do some research and find out. But then again, when I say things about being on boards, I've learned about youth homes and what happens to those kids. I was on the board for the Missoula Indian Center. I knew about those issues with urban, urban Indian health issues and try to make some changes that make some systemic changes so that people can live a healthier life. 
I understand um, Missoula Senior Citizen Center because I was on the board there as well with some of our seniors in the city and some of the needs they want and some of the so what they look for in health and wellness and activities and appreciated as elders as well. So when I think about all the ramifications of Missoula, it makes me feel good that I'm part of a city council that can help every category that I had mentioned. And more than anything, as I talk about this, I, and being an indigenous member of our community, inclusion is very important to me. I want to be included. You don't know what it's like when you go um, check out at a store and somebody looks at your credit card and look at your name and they laugh at the name Weaselhead. Right. And I have to do education on the spot. And I've learned from my colleagues that a couple things can happen in a very affirmative way. You can say, that's my last name. Please don't laugh at that because I won't laugh at your name. That's that respect. Yeah. But if you continue to do this, two things can happen. I can go to the organization and make sure everybody has cultural sensitivity training or else there could be a lawsuit. And so those things are issues that we face that we don't have to face as a sensitive society. Montana has a great website with the Office of Public Instruction, and I also encourage my colleagues and friends to do this. There's a website called the um, Essential Understandings of Montana American Indians. And if people go to that website and review that and look at that, they would be in the top 10% of Montana residents understanding American Indians. Amazing. There's a top 10%. For you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I have to learn about the European structure. Respect. I would like people to learn about our culture as well right. and understand us as, as what we were like. Historical trauma was one of those things that impacted Indian country. I want to address historical trauma so that, in fact, people can be at the table, be included. Their, their words and advice are taken as respectable words and advice. And I don't want to get to the point where I want people to say, do you know who you're talking to sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes they treat me like I'm a street person. And I'm saying, you know, my students call me Dr. Weaselhead at times. And their eyes open up, oh, you have a doctorate? And so those things, it's unusual for somebody who's not in that category before to be known as that. I don't push that agenda too much, but it's also the ace in the hole that I have if I need to do that. So I like to see myself as a critical thinker. Um, I went to graduate school at the University of Oregon in Eugene, and I had some wonderful professors who told me, you need to think beyond the boundaries. You need to ask these questions and you don't be quiet about it, and so that's part of it. Interesting. Well, you have two more minutes. Anything else you want to say? Two minutes. One of the things I've learned in talking to some of my um, colleagues and friends in Ward 4 is that we're faced with a lot of issues. Even though we're faced with a lot of issues, here's what comes out. Missoula is a very livable community, and they enjoy living in Missoula. Beyond anything else, beyond traffic, beyond taxes and that sort of thing, people are comfortable. We need to make sure that that's continued. And we need to make sure that if we're taxing people, we're taxing them for what we need to do for their wants and needs. Not something extraneous that the city council wants, but it's what the community wants. And so we'll be looking at that down the road. I thank you. Yes. This thank has you. been a wonderful um, chance for me to reflect on some of those questions and dig deep into my heart and my soul to answer them. But I'm, I, I really like the idea that I'm able to do that. Great. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to come and uh, talk about your campaign with us. Uh, super. All right. Well, we have just been visiting with Patrick Weaselhead. He is a city council candidate for Ward 4. For MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.